Just over a week ago, I posted a short video that I took when I was in Latvia. I meant to follow it up with this podcast, but the London terror attack happened, so this is now a week later than expected. The video I'm talking about is the one I posted of the Latvian Legion Day march through the centre of Riga. The march is to commemorate those who fought against communism and Marxist terror in Latvia and tried to prevent the Soviets occupying the country. The link to the footage is in the description below. And if you can, try to watch it all, as I tried to capture not only the size of the march, which numbered over 2,000, but also the sort of people on the march and the respectful and dignified nature of the event. But before I go into my thoughts on the event and what we can learn from it, I want to talk a little bit about Riga, the city, and the people. I highly recommend that every nationalist from Western Europe takes the time to visit a white Eastern European nation like Latvia, to see a homogenous white capital city, free from crime, free from litter in the street, free of beggars, free of immigrants, and a city that isn't overpopulated and bursting at the seams is overwhelming and highly refreshing. And the extra space in Riga affects everything. Nothing is cramped, the public transport is clean, the space to actually sit down, and no one is rushing about. People simply move at a different pace. At first, it was quite jarring. Cashiers taking their time to ring up your goods at the till, talking to customers, and not being in such a rush that all your goods get thrown around. In Britain, everything moves so fast, and everyone is so packed in, You feel like a sardine moving quickly and anonymously through life. But there is a better way, a much better way. What's more, in Riga anyway, there are laws against being drunk in public and drinking in public. And believe me, this makes for a better place. On Friday and Saturday evenings, young people are seen walking through the street hand in hand and going for coffee and cake and can be seen actually talking to one another. The streets aren't filled with drunken idiots slipping over in their own vomit. But this brings me on to one of the saddest moments about my trip to Riga. When we were there, one of our party inquired as to how welcome a British citizen would be if he or she tried to move to Latvia. And the response was truly embarrassing. We were told that we would be of course welcome as long as we didn't end up urinating on the Freedom Monument when drunk like British people have done in the past. This made me bow my head in shame. A beautiful, all-white European capital, where the only non-Europeans are Chinese and Japanese tourists, and the British go there and get drunk and urinate on monuments. How very, very sad. Now, when you compare Riga to a city like, say, Paris or London, it's painfully clear that multiculturalism has turned some of the most influential European cities into nothing more than overcrowded slums. Once you go east, it opens your eyes to how good life can be, to how different life is in a homogenous and culturally cohesive European city. I implore all my listeners to go and see for themselves. But now on to the march. And what an event! Again, this was a huge contrast to the kind of nationalist events I've seen in the UK. The Legion Day March was peaceful, respectful, and attended by people who were there for the right reasons. Not there to get drunk, not for aggravation, and not just for a day out of thrill-seeking and attention. We had got up early on the morning of the march and gone out to have a look around Riga and expected to see Reds and Antifa gathering, but quite the opposite. We saw veterans from the Latvian Legion walking around in their uniforms and people who were smartly dressed were walking around with Latvian national symbols pinned to their clothing. As we walked around, we saw a large number of police in riot armour. And when I say riot armour, that's not hyperbole. These officers were kitted out in metal plates that were sprayed matte black and were all carrying large, heavy-duty zip ties to restrain anyone that didn't comply with their instructions. At first, this made some in our party a little nervous. 
After all, we've seen the UK police be very heavy-handed with nationalists. But later, we discovered the police were not there to stop the march, but to do their duty and facilitate the event passing off without any trouble. As we stood, waiting by the church where the march began, the church slowly filled up and more and more people joined the group waiting for the march to begin. We stood in the warm sun, acknowledging those who walked past and greeted us. A girl approached us with a large bag of ribbons in the colours of the Latvian flag. I reached for my wallet, but she signalled no. The ribbons were free and she handed one to each of our party and we affixed them to our coats. As I thanked her, a Latvian gentleman heard we were speaking English and approached us. He was welcoming and clearly very happy we had come all the way from England. He shook hands with us and chatted with us for a while. People acknowledged us and smiled as they walked past, greeting others with a welcoming nod. The whole feeling at the event seemed different to marches and demonstrations held in the UK. As the crowd grew, more and more people arrived carrying large flags on proper flagpoles. This was a magnificent sight and a total contrast with the rubbish I've seen at rallies, marches and demonstrations back in England. One of my pet hates is seeing people with flags tied around their necks, trailing behind them like second-rate capes. It doesn't look good. In fact, it looks ridiculous. And also, using your flag in that way is hardly fitting. Another thing, while I'm on this subject, if you are going to bring a flag to a demo, don't bring one with Sports Direct or JD Sports branded in the corner. It's our national flag, not an advert for globalism. But these sites were few and far between in Latvia, and that is something I welcome. Everyone arriving at the march was well-dressed, respectful, and clearly had genuine reverence for their flag. Yet, I did spot a few on the march who had flags wrapped around themselves, but they were a small minority. The other thing I noticed was that no one was drunk. In fact, I didn't see a single person with a can of beer. Now contrast that to the average EDL rally or march. For those not from England, the EDL is the English Defence League. The average EDL march is not only full of people who use the English flag as a cape, but those people usually also have a can of lager in one hand. I mean, seriously, I shouldn't even be having to say this, but in Britain, it has become commonplace for marches and demos to be full of people who are drunk or are using the event as some kind of social affair and day out, where it's all about the booze and getting rowdy. And don't get me started on drugs. The stories I've heard about coachloads of EDL or other so-called nationalists in the UK all snorting cocaine and boozing from 8am on the coach on the way to the demo literally makes me shudder. Now all of this is in stark contrast to what I saw and participated in during my visit to Latvia. No boozing, certainly no one on drugs. I'm not even sure if I saw anyone smoking, but the whole affair was sober and respectful and the image portrayed was exactly what we in Britain should be seeking to emulate. It wasn't like a gang of football hooligans out on an away day. In fact, it was the very opposite. As we marched through the city, the flag bearers at the front formed two lines either side of the main road that led to the Freedom Monument. This allowed the march to pass underneath the flags. People on the march could be heard singing traditional Latvian songs and between the flag barriers stood Latvian girls with flowers in their hair and large bundles of white roses which they handed to those on the march to lay at the monument when they reached it in order to pay their respects to those who gave everything fighting the communists. And these girls were all beautiful. Not creatures the size of hippopotamuses. And you know the ones the waddling disgraces who insist on wearing leggings two sizes too small. These girls were slim, well-dressed and were models of European beauty. And when I say beauty, I don't mean two inches of makeup to cover up years of bad eating, late nights and binge drinking. I mean genuine beauty presented in a modest and traditional manner. Not in a micro skirt or with a low-cut top, 
It was really uplifting, and it was a model of how Europe should be. I felt both uplifted and humbled at the same time. To be around such wonderful people, to be in such a beautiful city, and to be involved in such a great event was incredible. And as the march finished, we stood talking to people who were involved, and we were invited back to the city centre offices of the National Alliance. Again, we were taken back by the professionalism of the people we met and how well turned out they were. And again, how many women were involved. After meeting the National Alliance, we were invited to a choir service at St Gertrude Old Church the following evening. Again, please compare and contrast this event with those seen in Britain. We sat in a beautiful church as a candlelit service took place. A large choir and conductor took their positions and sang a number of songs, whilst two large screens showed old footage of Latvia before the Second World War and how Latvians had rallied to oppose the Soviet menace. There was then a tribute to the heroes who fought Marxism, and all this was accompanied by one of the most beautiful choral services you could ever imagine. The quality of the performance mixed with the patriotic imagery was overwhelming and a truly spiritual event. Again, this wasn't rowdy. It wasn't about drinking or going wild. It was about culture, high European culture and resistance to our enemies. Beautiful imagery, incredible European music, all in a beautiful setting. It was something that I have never encountered before and after seeing it, I truly understand where we need to be. And yes, I've put a link in the description below to YouTube footage of that service. Now, I realise things are different in the UK in terms of the left being allowed to attack and disrupt our events. I realise the police aren't there to protect us and won't facilitate our events passing off smoothly. So please don't use this as an argument to attack what I'm saying. I'm not talking here about reds and violence. I'm talking about excellence and morality. A nationalist event is not a day out. It's not for day trippers looking for a politically incorrect diversion. It's not about getting on the coach at 7am, cracking open the cans of lager, stopping at the services for a full English and then back on the coach for a few more tins and a line of coke before tying a flag around your neck and getting ready to shamble through a town centre singing No Surrender to the IRA. That's not going to inspire our people. Hell, it doesn't even inspire me. In fact, I find it all embarrassing. And after seeing what I have seen in Latvia, it's not just embarrassing, but it's counterproductive and sickening. You see, nationalism shouldn't be like an episode of the Jeremy Kyle show. Nationalism is about excellence. It's about showing the world and our people a better way. Showing people that we are a beacon of hope, decency, strength and morality that exists in a sea of degeneracy, madness and liberal fallacies. Once you take morality, traditionalism and order away from nationalism, it's no longer nationalism. It's just a group of angry guys having a good old knees up. Now I knew all this before I went to Latvia, but seeing it put into practice hammered it home to a greater degree. Western Europe is descending into madness and everything we hold dear Everything that made Western Europe the centre of the civilised world is now sinking into this sea of chaos. If we are to lead our people to salvation, we cannot go down the route that liberalism has laid out for us. We can't allow ourselves to simply be part of that madness, just with an anti-immigration message tacked on. We have to be more. We have to be better. We have to embrace what made Europe great in the first place. We have to stand apart and be truly excellent because that excellence once inspired not only our people, but the whole world. And I believe it can do so once again. Thank you for listening.
If you enjoyed the podcast, you can like and share on social networks. If you want to hear more from me, please hit the subscribe button as new videos are posted every week. You can also read my book, The Fall of Western Man. It's available for free as an ebook and in both hardback and paperback, and the links are all in the description below. Finally, if you want to join in the discussion with me, feel free to add me on Facebook, and you can now follow me on Twitter too. Everyone's welcome.